I'm Jenny. I'm the Director of Fertility and Life Ministries for the Diocese of Lansing. There are a few things I'd like to expand on that Rebecca touched on that I think are very important. She's talking about reaching voters. So we did some polling and we found, um, you know, some there's yeses, there's noes, and there's people who are undecided, right? So we were looking at undecided voters and undecided voters, 54% um, of those undecided voters went to no votes when they heard the information that Rebecca had presented. So it's very, very, very important that we're reaching those undecided voters in our primary way that we're going to be doing that is through advertising, right? So we need to make sure that we're getting that message out there and that we're, we're talking about parental consent, abortion through nine months, um, the health and safety regulations and the, the physicians, so our physician law being in jeopardy. And so those were the points that got voters from undecided to no. And so we are, these are the things like we're asking people, if you only have a, a few moments to speak to somebody, those four points are the ones that are driving people from undecided and also from yes to no especially the parental consent and abortion through nine months. We've found that those are really, really moving people. Um, another thing I'd like to touch on is Rebecca was talking about that viability standard. I have a son named Teddy. Uh, he's eight years old now. He was born at 34 weeks, three days, and he had full respiratory failure, sepsis, PDA, pneumonia. He ended up going um, from Sparrow being medevac over to U of M. Uh, we knew ahead of time that there were some things severely wrong with him and that he was probably going to need to be on life support. He's now eight years old. He just turned eight last week and he runs around and he's um, just a little eight-year-old boy. Under this new viability standard, my husband and I could have aborted him. And so that for me, that, that viability standard is very, it's very, very close to home. And so I, I think those are the sorts of things that when we're talking to people, we all know people who have had babies who were premature. The vast majority of those babies would have been abortable under this new viability standard. Another thing that I think is very important, I work with a lot of women who suffer from infertility, couples who suffer from infertility. Infertility is on the rise for a, a lot of reasons. But approximately 20% of couples are going to face infertility. Currently, um, besides all of the very severe moral issues related to in vitro fertilization, it costs about $25,000 for a couple to go through in vitro fertilization. Now imagine 20% of Michiganders going through in vitro fertilization on your dime, <laughs> right? So this is very, 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 very extreme. And then another thing that I think is very important, when Rebecca was talking about sterilization, um, I'm one of the main people at the diocese who goes out and talks to individuals about transgender therapies and transgender ideology. That line in there about sterilization and individuals is very concerning because one of the primary things that is used in transgender affirming care um, is very specific hormones. And those hormones, when given to children, especially when given to children, cause permanent sterilization. These are also the same hormones that are ironically used in infertility treatments. So where it says a fundamental right to both infertility treatment and sterilization, those are the medications that are used in transgender therapies. So when we say that this is opening up a fundamental right for children to receive therapies without their parents' consent because it would infringe on their autonomous decision-making, we're not exaggerating. We're not, we're not trying to conflate something. We're really just pointing out some very obvious facts. If you work with people and who, who understand what medications are given, how they're given, and to whom, you can see that this language opens wide the door for those sorts of things. So these, these are issues that Rebecca is spot on when she says that these are very concerning and they far surpass Roe. And I think the thing that when, I, when I've listened to Rebecca give these presentations that hits home the most for me is that the messaging on the, the yes prop three is we're restoring Roe. She lists, Rebecca lists a whole bunch of um, different laws that existed under Roe that we had. So those laws go away 
And so it's, it takes Roe and it just basically obliterates what, was, what we were allowed to regulate and it's just completely different. So when we hear the messaging, we're restoring Roe, that's not what they're doing. And I think those one of, that's one of the things when we're talking to people, we need them to understand this does not restore Roe. This has been called the most extreme measure in the United States and we are the guinea pig for it. And I know this because I have been following this petition since um, basically since February. I've been um, on a lot of their different meetings. I've been in all of their email blasts. I wanted to see what was happening. And I received an email last night from the Reproductive Freedom for All People stating that they're taking the amendment that they're trying to push through in Michigan and they're now going to be pushing it through in Vermont. So we are the experiment for what's going to come. And so I think it's really, really, really important that we understand this and that we are going out and we're trying to educate our friends, our family, our coworkers, anyone who is ready to listen. From the diocesan standpoint, um, <laughs> thank God for Bishop Boyer. Right? So he has been, from the very beginning of this, strong. He has been very courageous. As soon as this came out and he knew there was a petition, it, it, the second he heard there was a petition, he wrote a letter. And he had it ready and waiting to go in Faith Magazine. And so when it became apparent that this was actually going to be a circulated petition, it went out. When he, uh, I talked to him in March and I was like, I think this is going to end up on the ballot. So he wrote a letter. He had it ready to go. He started our, our campaign and what we were gonna do as far as like what the diocese was going to do and how we were going to respond. And as soon as it came out that this was going to be on the ballot, he stepped forward. So he has been waiting and ready to stand firm that this is not something that Catholics can vote on, that anyone should vote on, and we have to be very clear that we're going to confront this with prayer, fasting, and alms. And so how are we doing that from the state standpoint? So we meet um, with Rebecca, the MCC, all of the diocesan directors throughout the state meet once a week, and we debrief, we share ideas. We've done um, lay equipping webinars together. We're working together to use the best information. You'll see the videos with like Dr. Stark, um, who is from Detroit, and then you see our doctor, Dr. Um, Castillo, and then we have Dr. Monticello from from uh, Saginaw, we're all working together to make sure that we have a united voice. And I think that's a really important thing that through the MCC, through the diocese, all the diocese, we're walking lockstep together. We have an initiative, if you haven't already signed up for the Fight Like Heaven Rosary Novena that's in the middle that we're doing, we're doing that. We're doing that with Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, Saginaw, I believe Diocese of Detroit is doing, Archdiocese of Detroit. So we're all doing this novena together. Um, we have it last check, which was, I think, about a week ago. We had 13,000 people that see, received the, the daily Rosary Novena with a 98% open rate. That means of all those people, 98% are participating. They're watching the videos. Please be sure to share those videos. We also have been training people to go door to door. That's going on throughout the state. Um, we have, I, I've been getting reports back from the various uh, parish captains throughout our, our diocese that several of our parishes completed last week sending cabin, canvassers door to door in their entire parish boundaries. And so what does that mean? That means people are knocking on doors with the information that's back there on the table saying, this is what's in the ballot. We just want you to understand it and want you to know. And I got a report um, yesterday afternoon from one of the canvassers that they actually ran into an abortion um, assistant. So, so uh, someone who assists abortions. And this man who is an abortion assistant, after finding out about the regulation issue in Prop 3, said that he didn't feel comfortable with what that would do for his patients. And he decided he was going to vote no on Prop 3. So this is somebody <clears throat> Changing his heart and mind is obviously the long-term goal, 
But when he saw what that would do, how extreme this measure was, he said he was going to vote no. So these are the sorts of things that we're doing from a diocesan perspective. We have the yard signs, sorry, Father Matthias. Susanna picked up 750 more, <laughs> but we have 15 parishes who didn't get any. So we're trying to get them out. Um, we're having printing issues. We have lots of different uh, materials in the back that, that, you, can, that you could take. Um, we have lots of different uh, types of events. We're going to be holding town hall meetings throughout the last two weeks of October uh, in the diocese to have a representative. Uh, Rebecca will be one of them, but a legal representative, uh, a medical representative, somebody from Democrats for Life, and a post board of women throughout the whole state, or excuse me, the whole diocese to answer questions for those people who are on the fence. So please, if you have friends or family who are going to vote yes, or who are undecided, that would be a time for them to come and get information on why this is so extreme. And so we have also too, um, we've got, oh gosh, the lay equipping webinar was last week. That is now available online if you missed it. It's an hour and a half and we have all, we have two different attorneys. Rebecca was one of them, two different doctors and several other uh, individuals, um, somebody from MCC who can help you to be able to talk to your friends, family, and neighbors. So th these are just one of lots, of, some of lots and lots of things that are going on, but we've also been able to reach the priests. We've, every single diocese in the state has done webinars or in-person events for their priests to be able to understand what's going on. And then through the MCC, we have all of the different beautiful uh, bulletin inserts and all of these different things that you guys have been seeing on social media going out and then of course we have our communications department that is releasing videos weekly and so the main place for us for our diocese is dioceseoflansing.org org and our home page is dedicated to this right now if you go to dioceseoflansing.org you will see all of the different things that we're doing and it will also connect you to MCC but very importantly, it will connect you uh, to the coalition, which is Citizens to Support Michigan Women and Children, um, which is the website supportmiwomenandchildren.org, which Rebecca has up here on the sign. So these are the things that we're doing in the diocese to try and help you to be able to sp speak to anyone that you can.